So this afternoon I'm testing a new marrow stitch and I've drawn this one Real sure how it's going to work out, but let's give it a try. So I'll go ahead and close the stitch player and I'll highlight the item touching H on my keyboard to show me where it's starting and where it's ending. And then I'm going to go to settings, create pattern, and I've already done this, so I have a pattern set of things that I've designed, and I'll just call this one New Marrow. I'm going to have it um, remove the color changes, remove other functions, even though I had actually drawn it with a stitch that didn't stop every two in a half millimeters. I wanted these to be long stitches. And they're not terribly long. They're um, a little less than four millimeters wide. So that's safe. Um, and I'll say I'd already created the folder, the pattern set. So I'll say okay. Tells me it exists. So I'm going to have it overwrite. You won't see that when you start a fresh one. Now here are my instructions. It's telling me to enter a start point. <laughs> I'm going to have to do it again. Do you see what I did? I touched the screen. Let me escape. So let's select this again. Settings. Create pattern. I'll name it New Marrow. And OK. Overwrite. Yes. I start going to be careful with my mouse. I actually use a touchpad. Uh, so, but down in the corner, it's asking me to enter the start point of the reference line. And I want this to be about here. And then it's going to ask me to enter a endpoint. What I'm going to do is hold my control key so that I can get this very straight. And it tells me the new pattern has been created. I'm going to touch zero on my keyboard and then one to show actual size. Now to create this I took my grid down to one millimeter squares. So that's kind of distracting now so I'll remove it and I'm just going to draw a circle. So from center I'm holding control stitching stretching to the right, hit enter, and I get a, a circle. Now if it's still trying to draw another circle, let's hit escape, and I'm going to select this circle, and let's apply the pattern run. So I'll right click to get the properties. This is the default that it defaults to the uh, Berdina Heirloom folder. But I'm going to go searching, and sometimes you have to scroll. The ones that we create will show up at the bottom. And I, note that there's two different views. You could look at it as stitches or look at it as thread. But I'm going to select this one, click OK, and um, I'm fine with the size, but I could actually change this if I wanted to do a, a taller uh, design. That Those components can be changed right now, uh, but I'm going to say OK. And so what I'm seeing is that these could actually be a little closer together. See, I've got some gaps. So let's open the object properties again. 
and let's change the spacing to perhaps three and apply. That's pretty nice. That's going to cover the edge nicely. Now, when I save my designs, I usually give that a different color. We'll just grab this and give it a different color. So that's the one I created. And then this is this is my sample. And I'm going to put that in the center. And that's how I'll save this. Um, so that if, if I want to use the same motif in another software, I have several that I use, or a different computer, I can easily grab this file and put it into the settings for um, to use again if I save it. So I'm going to save this as GB Merrill 24. Control save. <laughs> Okay, let's watch it sew. The black lines you see are, are merely placeholders for stitches to come, and you can turn them off. I think it's this one, Show Outlines. So now I'll take this to the sewing machine and see if I like the appearance. Thanks for watching.